All right, everyone, welcome back to the after show for episode number 18, all about hunters. Chat room tonight was crazy fun. You guys are awesome. If you're watching this on YouTube right now on a VOD and looking at my face like, what's the chat room? You should be here for the live show. Just saying. Welcome mm. back, everybody, though. Have a good little little breakage there. I got some water. Got to stretch my legs a little bit. Did Anna, did you fight your cat? Is your cat okay? My cat's fine. He's, he's actually, he's, he's on the desk back there. Where is he? Yeah, he see, is. you can see him. <laughs> there he is. He's there chilling. He is. There, there should be a couch right there. I'm, I'm moving furniture in my apartment, so. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, there's my cat. The cat's the fifth final boss guest today, or the, <laughs> the third final boss guest, yes. the, the third co-host. Absolutely. Uh, now that he, now that he hangs out on the show with everyone. Really fun. Careful, because you're among hunt hunters. We'll tame that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you can have him. <laughs> oh no. He pees on things. You can have him. Oh no. <laughs> That's that the funny. special attack is pee on something that your enemy owns. Oh my goodness, that is a good. Okay, that's a good uh, point. So. <laughs> anyway, I saved terrible. some of the questions out of chat. If we want to just hop right. Yeah, no, I was gonna, I was gonna give stuff. one little thing here to everybody that's been sitting mm -hmm. here waiting. I want to talk about what's happening in December real quick, just to real preface this shortly, because we have tons of these little guys. I'm gonna go close up and focus my camera real quick here. So we oh, have this, oh, the wristbands. The wristbands, yeah, yeah where's, where's Anna's? There's yours, yep. Yeah. See? Also to give a, we have tons and tons and tons of these. I gotta focus my camera manually, right? So I've got a ton of these sitting around. Oh, Roger's got his on. Wait, we go to Roger really quick. Roger? Yeah. Wait. You got it? <laughs> you had it, you had it. So yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. one of these, we have blue ones and orange ones. Let me go closer. Yeah. And it's got a little Ragnaros face in the back. Hang on, I'm holding it. I have, I have terrible hands. There we go. Yeah, there's, there's Ragnaros' face in the back. So, we're going to be doing a, a, a December donation sort of like giveaway slash community drive with you guys where starting next week, all the plans and all the, all the stuff will come out during this week, right? So you'll have plenty of time to like prep for it and you have four weeks to do this. We'll do we'll over four shows in December starting on the, oh, sorry, we'll have the details next week and it starts on the 8th because there's five weekends in December, right? So it starts the 8th, yeah, next weekend. So we'll have a couple different tiers, right? where you can donate to the show and directly get back wristbands. I know people want wristbands, right? I'll be mailing them all out to you guys, like in January, because I'll be mailing them all out from me personally to you guys. So if you also put in a larger donation, they'll be put in to a drawing to win a customized Final Boss t-shirt. If you watch the episode 15 of Final Boss, you'll see Reese, uh, Emily, Anna, and I all walking around in Final Boss t-shirts with the Ragnaros logo on the front, our names in the back. Yours would be that customized. They may or may not say mobs or minions if you want that, like a mob or minion shirt for the guys and girls kind of deal. That basically just determines if it's a guy cut or a girl cut shirt. But I'll be offering off, uh, raffling off some of those t-shirts. We also have some Ask Mr. Robot um, uh, subscription cards, some two month ones and some year ones, right, Anna? We have mm -hmm. to give away, that we'll be giving away, I think during yes. the month of December. Here, not do you just... have the camera on me or is it on you? Yes, ma'am. All right, we have, the, we have uh, Ask Mr. Robot. Oh, yep. Subscriptions here, yes, that uh, that I got sought out by Louise and, mm -hmm. and her cute little doggy at BlizzCon, oh and God, she so gave cute. me these. Yep. And they said, and they were for Final Boss TV. So yep. we'll be um, we'll be doing something exciting with these. They has all the details. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. I just have I just have the gift. Yes, you do. So it we'll makes be, all the plans. We'll be doing all that just a way to help because we're looking at upgrades for the show, and it's definitely between the fourteen to two thousand dollar range. We have been given some awesome donations already from you guys. So we just wanted to get, I have like 600 more, more wristbands sitting around from BlizzCon. And I want to give those up to you guys, right? So the best way, I don't want you guys to buy them from me. So, cause that's the business store and tackles and the weird stuff. So we're just gonna do easy things to do donations for, to help us grow the stream and to get the software and the upgrades and the camera equipment and the audio equipment to make the show better for you guys. And then of course, give you part of the show, which will either be through the wristbands, which we'll get plenty of, and then the chance to get an awesome t-shirt that will be customized for you. And there might be a third tier for like super duper donations. Cause we have, we've technically gotten one super duper donation. I don't know what to do for that gentleman. I, I don't even, I was baffled. Get a date with Deva. Oh, mm. oh, date with oh, Deva? You yeah. wanna do that Deva? Yeah, you wanna have a, yeah? It depends, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Transportation so, not included. No, transportation to Finland not included. All right, mm -hmm. well, but that's going to be something cool that you guys can look forward to for December 1st next week, and we're excited to 
have you guys all had like we want to do like a Kickstarter or something like that, but that felt like too much extra work to, to handle. So we're going to make it simple for you guys, since that's we're, we're not doing that crazy. And we're only going to be opening it really for like the month of December, just because that's we we can prep for the new show for the next season to have awesome upgrades and stuff, which will you guys help us with. So we skip some stuff. Yeah, Anna, what did you want to bring up real quick here? Because I definitely have some questions in the email. If you guys have questions for, for Deva or Roger, definitely send it to us at just uh, Final Boss TV on Twitter, or you can go down to the button below, or Nightbot just said it. You can just grab the button below and send us a question uh, in the show. So, and we will Well, check. Here's, a, here's a question that I don't know if we got to in Roger's last episode. Oh. What is Roger's real name? Because it's oh. not Roger. <laughs> well. It's not? It's, oh. it's, it's right. I think people want to know how you pronounce your last name. I'm pretty sure that might be what it is. <laughs> okay, so my well, real I name. I want to make sure that your real name isn't actually Roger, Roger Brown. Brown. Yeah, okay. Yes, it is not my real no. name. No. My real name is George. And my last name. Does anyone know my last name? I mean, you don't have to give out your last Ty name. I prefer not to. Ty but I type it on chat if you know it. Well, it's fine, I mean. They've it's seen on your Scrolls Twitter. stream. Something like Sini Otaki, so something like that. <laughs> It's no, on your it's... Twitter, actually. Yeah, it's just his Twitter, uh, too. Don't, yeah. don't ruin it. I mean, oh. now you're just giving <laughs> tips. Tips. <Ugh>. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Cumberbatch. Yeah, George Cumberbatch. Like yeah. Back <laughs> and Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Die. Okay, Blue so yeah, my name is George Georgiadis. Yeah. Uh, Greek name, yeah. Kind of like sounds, the, the first name and the last name sound almost the same. Correct. Oh, yes. well. That's not oh, that. well. That's why no, I changed it to Roger Brown. Yeah, no, it's an awesome last name. I mean, my last name is, is Polish, too, and the English of it is Knick, which isn't actually real, because there's no vowels in it. It's just a it's just a sound in Polish, mm -hmm. but... Now, how did you come up with Roger Brown, then? No, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> let's just say that uh -oh. uh, it was... Um, I was young, and it was uh, someone's birthday. Oh, no, where is this no story going? <laughs> Deva knows what I'm talking about right here, right? Uh, and yeah, like we had a lot of fun. We had a few drinks, and then I uh, I ended up with a nickname the next day, and it stuck with me. <laughs> There's like a mysterious blank in the middle there. Yeah. Let's, let's just keep something to ourselves. Let's keep something secret. <laughs> it's like the so step step one, step two, question mark, question mark, question mark. Step three, Roger Brown. <laughs> yeah. Now, Deva, how much. did you Profit. come up with your name? Dang. Well, when I was two years old, uh, I was That's actually playing. Yeah, <laughs> I was playing a uh, nickname uh, called Devil. Very much sure, I know, man. Um, I was playing nickname Devil, and then I started to like. I started to play Quake and all that stuff, and um, basically I played against bots because I didn't have internet back then. Oh, okay. And um, then I just started to think like it would. It wouldn't sound cool if it would be like, if uh, I, I'm thinking like the narrator or um, something like that says like, devil enters the arena. So I just <laughs> slightly um, change it. Configured it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's basically, I went with Deva and H in the end. So Deva. Uh, center the honor, you know, I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I started to play Counter Strike, and I'm like, what the hell is this H doing in the end? And uh, then I just got A and um, E in the end, so it's just, it, it was like D, V, H, and then I just went for Diva after that. Hmm. And after that, I've been uh, playing with that name, and Deva is basically only the, like, Agile version of Deva. Yeah. Okay. Because Hunter is Agile the class, so I, I thought it was okay name for my Hunter. But yeah, cool story, bro. Cool story. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it's like people don't know. Well, some people that. have really, some people yeah. have really cool name, cool stories about how they how they got their name. Um, yeah. A friend of mine, the way he got his name was he when he started playing WoW, he made one of every class and used the randomizer oh. to pick a name. And so I asked him, you know, why he played. This is Mellory, the um, former main tank and guild leader of Edge. And mm -hmm. so I asked him, like, Mellory was a very recognizable name. And I'm like, well, why are, why are you named Mellory? And it turns out that's just what the randomizer picked um, for that one of his ten classes. And he decided to stick with Paladin. And so that's why, he's, that's why his name is that name. So. 
Hmm. I don't know. I just like I like figuring out how people came up with the names that they play. Yeah, it is interesting yeah. to see how that happens too. Like where they came from <laughs> is fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Cause... I don't actually have all that many uh, questions out of chat. Actually, I'm I'm scanning them. I, chat was moving so fast that I was copying them pretty quickly, and most of them are kind of trolley questions, which sure. I'll probably ask anyway. Chat, don't worry, I'll ask your trolley questions as well. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have too many serious questions, so if you guys have serious questions for our Hunter Bros here. Make sure to ask them now or uh, chat them or tweet the final boss Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you let us know what the questions are because, you know, we'll, we'll hang around for a while and discuss some more Hunter stuff that we didn't yeah. get to. Like all, of our, all of our social stuff is down below. I know there's a lot of new people here tonight. So if you missed an episode before or you want to connect with us on either final, uh, Facebook or Twitters or the YouTubes, all the stuff is down below. So you can go check that out. And... Um, the Fire Lord is rather prolific on Twitter, depending on what's going on like that. I have to... And he also tweets himself in third person all the he time. He does. I don't know what the heck is his problem. Because everyone thinks it's me, and it's, like, not always me. So I don't know why... It's it's weird. Not only do I have... I mean, I usually post stuff about the show that's coming up or whatever. Like, I do that. But then when the, when the Fire Lord takes over, it's not... Don't look at me, guys. Goodness gracious. Uh-huh. It's Great not you. Of fire. Sure. Because it's not me, I'll tell you that. What the I, heck? Yeah. I don't ever have enough time. If I'm tweeting, I'm tweeting on my main you account. You tweet your main I'll, account, yeah. I tweet, I, I tweet the promotional stuff as well, just mm -hmm. so that everyone knows when the shows are coming up and stuff. But if yeah. the Fire Lord's talking in third person, just letting you guys it's, know, that's uh, not me. No, it's not me Although either. if all of us say that it's not us, then I don't know who's running that Twitter account. There's, there's the show eight, has a life of its own. There's nine people involved in the FBC, like the Final it's Boss true. crew. So who, who is it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll figure... It's a mystery. We'll figure it out later. Maybe the show has a life of its own. Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first raid boss ever is our mascot, so I mean, it only makes sense. Maybe he's just coming <laughs> back again. What's the best pet for Hunter? We all know it's the spore bat. Right. <laughs> oh, the spore bat. Too good. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's actually not a terrible boss. question. It ain't bad pets, at least in Tenman. It ain't bad pet, spore bat. No. It's kind of sad because I need to sacrifice uh, my melee, melee haste, 10% melee haste over the casters, scumbags, 5% uh, <laughs> spell haste. So I'm not Those happy casters. about that at all. Yeah. yeah. I, I know personally Aesop like in our my... guild has a spore bat named Floater. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's got a very mature sense of humor. Yeah. Talking about humor, my pet, which is my favorite one, both for use uh, in the raids is uh, my trusty KFC, which is um, yeah. uh, a tall strider. Because, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You can pet. So. That's good. Yeah, and it puts the debuff that uh, the Thunder Armor to, um, to an AoE around it, three stacks instantly. So it's pretty good if you don't have um, a rogue doing the fun of knives thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, KFC is my pet of. Uh, of choice, both for name and for use. Here's a question: What would what websites would y'all recommend for hunter theory crafting, um, or do you participate <laughs> in any sites frequently? So, what do you recommend? That's actually a question I wanted to put in the notes, but that was hard to find because I think all hunters have is like you have a spreadsheet. That's like it, right? Like you don't. Mm -hmm. Is there a website? There's not or even a lot based? of activity on each a. Yeah. Uh, so what yeah. Do do? The Lydia Jerks used to be pretty good back a couple of expansions before yes. but to be honest nowadays I don't even go there anymore I don't know I the I think the the discussion over there is not really realistic it's more like theoretical and it goes way out of uh, context sometimes and I just can't read 20 pages about stuff that is just not so interesting and not so you know realistic yeah so exactly I yeah. don't do early discharge either anymore. I, I used to do it like a couple of years back, but I, I don't do it anymore. It's just like exactly what Roger said. It's just the conversation bounces way off the topic now and then. And like if they could have all that stuff that they uh, went through in the threads on the on the like in first one page. Post. Yeah. 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 That would be awesome. Like summarize it on the first post. I would be I would be happy, but nah. Than mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, chat's bringing yeah. up. Not uh, to mention that uh, when I was actually participating there, I posted a couple of times and I got banned because apparently <laughs> I used my my enter too much. You know, <laughs> like they have some weird rules there. Like I, mm -hmm. the format wasn't according to their specifications. 
Well, and they ain't daily discharge for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what. Well, I mean, it, it used to be. It used to be moderated very heavily against yeah. like stupid people or people that you didn't want to talk to. But now the rule, and that's why Elitist Jerks as a website is just not used very much anymore. Mm. Now the it seems that they're more about arbitrary moderation than they are about keeping out people who don't have anything to contribute to the conversation. So instead of focusing on making the conversation something that's going to teach everybody um, and, and let high-level players learn from each other, it's really more focused on just moderating people who break like the most obscure rules ever. So... I mean, and I say that as somebody who used to be fairly active on EJ in the Rep Paladin thread, and it's not like I've I've never been banned or anything or seen any of my friends banned, but that's the the quality of the discussion there is just it's it's not that great, and it's just because the moderation yeah. has changed. And female dwarf was brought up a couple times in chat. Like it's just a yeah. simulation site. There wasn't like a forum there. You didn't like do a lot of theory crafting or talking to people, right? Like that's that didn't exist. Sh no, again, like uh, there used to be a thread. I don't know if there's any more on um, on Elite this jerk about some some tools like that to simulate yeah. uh, to do the simulations. Yeah, I think before it was called Female Dwarf. There was just a spreadsheet which I don't remember what it was called, but it was there at the Elite this jerks. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, many people use that, or they use like some uh, simulation craft or whatever. But I I used to do that, but ever since the game became so complicated. And there are so many procs, so many you know, random things that can happen in a fight. I uh, I don't take it too seriously anymore. I mean, what you're gonna go there and check, and you will see the stat weights. That's what you wanna see mainly, right? You wanna see, do I wanna reforge to crit or haste or mastery? That's what you, what what you wanna learn out of it. But most of the times, you're gonna get some random numbers that if you change a bit the. Um, the amounts they they change as well, and sometimes they're so close to each other that it's within margin of error. So I usually just try something on live, and then I try the other thing, and I see what works best for me and what does the most yeah. DPS. I think that's yeah. much more reasonable to do, at least for me, because I'm not that good with the whole theory crafting and math. I mean, the the, the background of the show and what the niche that I felt that needed to be filled is the putting like the pro players in the top folks there or really community involved people in front of the camera to talk to you guys and to quell rumors and to give you concrete information a lot of it still comes down to i almost want to say like the spark hugs method of playing where you just feel it out and just play and, and figure out what, what is best for you and with the new talent and glyph system especially it does work in that way that you can definitely figure out what works best for this encounter or that encounter or for you in general right because if you go back to that episode on final boss Sheena Fey is all math and numbers and theory and logs and, and, and loves that stuff. But Spark just, like, is a warlock, right? And he has a great website for it and, like, does a lot of definitive information. But he just always just he just feels the class out. And he just he learns and, and figures out what works for him. And that is what Roger said earlier, too, is that you got to find out what works for you. You can't always just go cut and dry, black and white. This is the best DPS that does the best everything. That's not how the game works. Mm -hmm. So... It's not how the game works. We want to help alleviate a lot of the bad and misinformation out there, but sometimes you can't just go, you know, cut and drive what some website says. So yeah. Well, here's another question, I guess, moving along because we've got we I've been trying to keep up with all of sure. the, the after show questions. A uh, novel had a really good one. No, he didn't. He's, I know, right? Gosh, novel coming up <laughs> with a good question. Of course, Who is of course. That guy? Yeah. Um, so he says, in the past, hunters had a set role uh, in a raid. For example, pulling trash. Or just pulling. I mean, that's that's what sure. hunters used to do. What do hunters bring to raids these days? Oh. I guess Basically, the typical adventure would be buffs. but Well, in 25 man, you don't really care. Yeah, in 25 man, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah. 10 man, um, it does really matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, but, um, I think right now, the... Okay, the pulling the trash or pulling the bosses was like way before, like we're talking about five years ago. Like plus, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's just like MMO stuff. Like that's not even just yeah. WoW stuff. I think right now the the thing that hunters are really good at is just doing the shit jobs. Sorry for the for the <laughs> no. phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because <laughs> whenever you have to, you know, DPS a target fast, let's put the hunters to do it, you know? Whenever you have to kite something, whenever you have to whatever, you know? Just whatever. It's the hunter's job to do so. Hmm. 
that's that's basically it. For example, on Thok, you want some people to be the furthest away targets when the uh, phase two starts, and who's gonna go there? Well, okay, the first what? guys, the first the first guys on the list on that macro is my name and Potoms. I'll tell you that for okay, sure. Okay, yeah. If you want people to move out on Garros for the the um, what's it called the the weapon desecration the desec weapon. the desecrate yeah the hunters are first in that line as well I mean it's always the hunters and I think that's mainly because of the movement and how easy it is for us but overall in the years I mean you have deterrence you have different kinds of stuff that allow you disengage you know um, uh, hunters were on Ragnaros doing the the water thing you know where they clean the the fire. Well, yeah. I didn't do it yeah. because I said... Officer Card. Officer Card? Officer <laughs> Card again. <It's> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you can go... Yeah, I put the mages there. We had like eight of them. So I was like, just take some of those and leave me alone, please. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the main thing that... If you, if you want to do these extra jobs, which sometimes are interesting, right? Sure. Like, it's not always bad, but... You're never going to be the guy who's like topping the meter because you're always doing these jobs. Because, you know, the warlock, whatever, they need to multi dot everything to maximize, but you can't really do that. So you're hitting the target, which is the most important in the fight. So you're going to see yourself topping that meter, but that's the only meter you'll be topping. But I, I got like a um, great example what that uh, True Fire just said in the chat uh, the Tortoise. Um, you need to search the cells and kick those. Obviously, you can DPS while you're kicking that stuff. But at least on 10 man, you can feel the comfort that you are actually given the mo Like, let's face it, those are the most important jobs what mm -hmm. the hunters are getting. Yeah. Like, y they need to be taken care of, and if you're taking uh, care of that stuff, it's just meaning that your raid leader is putting like a lot of trust in you to actually make the stuff happen. At least yeah. that that's the way I um, I, I want to see. Even up. though <laughs> you ain't gonna top the meters, that is for sure. But then again, you are making uh, the most vital jobs in the in the raid. Because a, they need to be done. It's a team, yeah, and you need, to, you need to work together. And only certain classes, I guess, it comes down to your kit is the gives you the options to do these other jobs. Because mm. like, I'm sure is shit not gonna go kick turtles on Tortos. What? Like totally leave the boss and run across the room and like I got it, you know, field goal or whatever. That's terrible. Like, My certain raid classes leader just work. did that himself. What? Who did? My raid leader just did that himself. Well, what, but that's the advantage of having a raid leader who plays a ranged class. Exactly. Well, as a ranged class, like so, it works differently ways. And like you guys have good mobility. At least right now, you have a cooldown that doesn't. You know, you can kind of give it so you don't get just killed by random stuff. Even though I don't know, hunters seem to die a lot too. It just depends. Maybe because they have all this extra responsibility. But mm -hmm. that spawn interesting tide takes. It's cool how you guys both have different takes on this because you both raid different formats, but. Also, also another thing that I want to mention is that hunters are useful in a raid, especially in a 20, 25 man scenario right now, yeah. because, uh, well, let's face it, someone needs to pick up that male agility gear. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> well, yeah. That is actually, that is huge. Uh, in 10 man, I basically get every single male agility loot that drops. It's huge. And uh, let's say T on T progress. I got so insane gear, so I actually topped the whole uh, Lation fight, even though we had two Warlocks and stuff like that. But I just got lucky with the gear, man. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Good stuff. Yeah, being a plate strength DPS is not exactly the same. <laughs> Although I guess there's not all that many melee in raids these days, so. Aww. Enhanced summons, what is this? Hey, that is, hey. That is chanting the enhancement summons. What is that? I'm right here. Yeah, I don't know. Like that is some, is that some kind of buffed of. version of an elemental shaman. What? I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen um, that. Elemental shaman who's, who's just next to the boss and hits him with stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dang. Uh, here's like a, here's a mathy question for you. This came in in the emails. Phoenix Star, an EU horde Agramar, asks. Um, so this is a question about BM hunters. Currently, he's been gemming agility haste. I was wondering if it was right for him to actually just reforge into just straight haste. 
instead of go reforge and gem, I guess, out of just agility haste and go straight haste. Is there a point where BO hunters do that, or just agility haste is still no. good? Or? No. The thing is that agility is so much better than any of your secondary stats that you yeah, okay. want to maximize that as much as possible. And you should even go the other direction and gem full agility if the if the socket bonus is not uh, agility pretty much. Like it depends obviously on the item. But well this tier there are a lot of red sockets anyways. But yeah, go as much as agility as you can. And, um, and then how about for reforging then? Would you want mastery or haste then? Or crit? Well, as as uh, Deva said, crit? the order that uh, we're following at least right now is crit over haste over mastery. Oh, okay. And yeah. it's for both specs, it's pretty much good. And okay. also uh, it was mentioned... Wanna... Sorry. Go yeah. ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, uh, I think Truefire mentioned it on the, on the chat as well, but secondary stats for hunters are not that important. Like... They're not, there's not something like on, on mages, right? On, on fire mages. Crit makes your rotation better because you get more of the hot, uh, hot procs, what is it called? I can't even remember the names. Damn it. I need to play my mage again. <laughs> but, um, you know, up. you get something extra, not just damage out of the crit. So that makes it really good. And that's why some mages, I don't know what they do now, but they jam pure crit. But that's not the case for hunters. It's just yeah. as Deva said. I mean, um, the the mastery for for um, survival is just you know some flat percent of damage, which is small and it's whatever. And yeah. But yeah, what I want to add there, like... you can think about uh, agility. Agility is almost one agility is almost uh, four times better than the second next secondary stat, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Almost four, four times better. But uh, about three times, like, yeah, at That's least. That's so weird. Three times I'm, better. I'm in the opposite boat because it's so it's so non worthwhile to gem strength that I don't gem it anymore. Even in my even in my hybrid gems, uh, we gem expertise and then reforge out of it. It's just not worth it anymore to gem strength. So it's so weird to hear you guys say that agility is still worth that much to your class. I, I think that's that's pretty rare. Most of the DPS specs are gemming secondary stats at this point. Is it an agility thing? Because Enhancement Shaman is, is used to be agility. Like right now we're agility mastery and basically just mastery. So But all, you get so much more mastery, right? Like, well, oh. there's a point where you you like it almost doesn't make any sense. And uh, Purge and, and them and the math right now is like it's almost the same at some degrees. But it just depends. I mean, I'm not as straight up with Hunters. I and mean, I'm also not as straight with like Rip Paladin. So that's funny though that each class... I don't know, is that, is that design good? Would you give that a design thumbs up that each class is dynamic in that sense? Or uh, do you think stacking like straight secondary stats is kind of meh? Well, I mean, they, it makes they, jewel crafting pretty much the worst profession ever, so well, okay, I'm a little yeah. bit bitter about it. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't fix the scaling, they didn't yeah. fix the um, the proportions on those jewel crafters' gems. I, I just dropped yeah. jewel crafting like a week and a half ago, so I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit peeved. Either. Yeah. No, I, I switched to engineering for Siege Crafter, which is why mm -hmm. I forgot to put the enchant on my belt, as chat totally called me out on. But um, yeah. No, I don't think it's all that interesting. I, I think yeah. secondary secondary stats got too strong, and the whole I mean the the whole gemming, gemming reforging thing is going to get completely toned down for the next expansion anyway. So. Oh well, yeah, half of it's gone. So. Yeah, but, yeah I want to add one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You yeah, as a hunter, you basically. At least as survival, uh, it really uh, is dependent uh, from the scale factors, what you get on your shots and stuff like that. And obviously, for hunters, agility also increases crit. While uh, strength users, when they stack up strength, it doesn't increase the crit. So yeah. basically, hunters are getting double, uh, yep. double gain from their agility. Yeah, interesting. That's a good point, though, too. I wonder if they can do something about that in the uh, future with 6.0. But another question that came in, this is from Death Banner on Hyjal. Do you feel the Hunters should have a raid cooldown to make them more competitive with other classes? No, so, I'll take that one. What sort of what sort of cooldown <laughs> should Hunters get? Oh. I'll Anna. take that one before our boys answer. Um, <laughs> I think, I mean, I've said this in every single show that we've done since we started talking about raid cooldowns, and I'll say it again just so that anyone in chat who doesn't know my opinion about this gets to hear it. There are too many raid cooldowns in raids. 
way too many. In my opinion, the only people who should have raid cooldowns are healers. All of the healing classes should have one, and not a single other class should. Maybe there can be an argument to be made that the tanks should also have a raid cooldown, but I don't think so. I don't think any of the DPS should have a raid cooldown, because once you give a raid cooldown to one DPS spec, every DPS spec without a raid cooldown becomes starts complaining that they Irrelevant. don't have utility. Yeah. Where's my utility? Where's my utility? You know, monks are like, oh yeah, retweet this if you're a beautiful monk who don't need no raid CD. And I'm like, <laughs> is it really that bad that you guys don't... Do you remember that time, like a year and a half ago, when the only DPS class with a raid CD was Ret Paladins? And I, I knew it was cool when I got it, and I knew it was going to be a balance problem. And lo and behold, now everybody and their mom has a raid cooldown, and everyone without one thinks that it's the end of the world, and their class yeah. is going to get benched for everything because they don't have a raid cooldown. Get over yourselves. You don't need a raid cooldown. And so I, I don't think yeah. anybody, I don't think any DPS classes should have one. Well, but I maybe the hunters, you. you know, who were who were here to listen to, maybe they have a different, maybe they have a different opinion. I agree um, with you. Hunters shouldn't get. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if uh, hunters should get um, raid cooldown, but what I do think is, like you said, there is way too many raid cooldowns. Yeah. But I think, uh, like. Well, Hunters are kind of meh situation at the moment, but uh, definitely we want to bring something on the raid. Like, we have this, we can bring whatever buff or debuff we want on the raid, which is huge on 10 man. But, for example, on 10, 25 man, you don't really give a flying rat's ass about <laughs> the um, debuffs and buffs what you're bringing, because you have a lot of more options for the classes what you bring uh, to the raid so you actually have all those buffs and debuffs already so what is hunter basically doing except for doing it doing the crap jobs that nobody else wants to do mm -hmm. like should you have that kind of class well you can just basically say okay uh, there's uh, one of these crap jobs and you should just do it by default should you have that I don't think like in my opinion, it's not fair, but somebody needs to do that, and obviously hunters with good mobility and whatnot. So it's a stitch on us every single time, but yeah. I think we should definitely bring something to the table. Like maybe raid-wide DPS cooldown, like banner or something like that. That would be nice. It's just, it puts too much okay. power into those players, and it really only affects, honestly, like the top of the pack. But then it just becomes a design problem overall because then you look at like rogues being good all the time now over like anyone else, right? And all I bring is enhanced shaman is like some extra healing cooldowns, right? Which can cleave for a lot, but it's only really worth it like every once every three minutes for you know ten seconds. But you can just have that in a better healer cooldown because right now they all have to balance them out because you can basically stack them in twenty five man, and mm -hmm. it just it, it deviates power too much to those with it and against those without it. Yeah. So. Okay. Roger's on, on turn. To yeah, it's my turn. <laughs> so, um, I think coming back to what we said before as well for some other cooldowns, I don't think that it's uh, a good thing that some uh, warriors and summons have the Stormlast in the banner because you can feel how necessary they are, at least yeah. in a 25-man raid. On Lay Sen, for example, we tried swapping out a warrior because he was pretty useless apart from the banner. That's why we we joke for him. We say, okay, when he's dead, we res him and tell him, you know, drop the banner quick before you die again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, um, oh, wow. the, it, you, you could see the difference not having one single banner at the start of a fight oh, yeah. with heroism and everything made a big difference in uh, the DPS check that you had to do in phase one. So I would say remove those things. Sorry, Krebsy. <laughs> remove those things completely yeah. from the game because they don't make much sense why mm -hmm. are those classes so special then moving on I think we should have a raid cooldown but not in the sense that you are thinking of I think it's time that there is a different class apart from druids who gives roar so I would say mm -hmm. kind of mixing it up here okay make aspect of the pack a cooldown like roar there you go so that you have that ability as well and you give something to the raid that actually is useful okay then 
to be honest, remove completely the aspects uh, system, make okay. the aspect of the cheetah as well something like uh, the paladin talent, which gives you some speed b boost. The, the short sprint the, thing. The, the sport oh, um, sprint, right? That doesn't daze so you if yeah. you get hit or it doesn't get removed or whatever. So forget about that. And then also something that we touched uh, on uh, earlier, I think we should remove Stampede and we should change Hunter's Mark instead of being this lame ass thing as Deva really uh, well <laughs> pointed out and make it actually a cooldown similar yeah. to Vendetta of the Rogues where you put it on a target and you might do like 20% extra damage and perhaps you know the, your Steady Shot and your Cobra Shot does, yeah, you, you gain double focus or something, something, something cool. Something dynamic. Some, something. Give us something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on the aspect of the of the uh, pack thing being like Yeah, it's a good idea. Good that idea sounds, yeah, that's a really good idea. I that like sounds that. That's a good idea, yeah. I don't know if they're going to remove your aspect system that's always been with hunters for a long time. I kind of have your it's almost like your stances. Yeah, but, but we don't do anything with yeah, them. Yeah, you just right stand now. one that the whole fight anyway. What? Like what does it do? It's yeah. True. It's true. It's true. I think only the only people that take advantage of that is PvPers when you go back and forth between um like Iron Hawk or whatever it is versus the other one, but like that's so such a small area. But that's a good point. I like that one though because I think yep. raid cooldowns should be more almost utility oriented. Obviously, there's the argument that movement speed and getting to places faster is a DPS cooldown because it lowers downtime, but it's kind of a soft DPS cooldown, obviously. So, like if you've ever read like old forum posts when like they put movement speed on boots and they, like mathed out all this stuff and how much. It, this movement speed percentage equals this much boss uptime, which is this much extra DPS because of this and that, whatever, all this coefficient garbage. But that's still like, that's a utility thing. That sounds like a good idea. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. That sounds like a good idea. Because there's a little bit of bloat on raid cooldowns right now. And back to your... Just a little. Crit, the creep banner thing, too. Warlocks and mages, like, they are different classes with the creep banner on the pole. Because of all their... The way that their spells scale and how, how hard they hit for, like, on the pole with all their stuff up. Warlocks and mages without one, not even like top 5, 10 TP, like nothing. But then like warlocks can burst the huge 1.5 plus million with the crit banner because of the coefficients and things. So, yep. That's rough. Anything coming from the Twitter? Let's see. Well, I have some questions that came out of chat. Um, Go Galesso asked actually quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, we might have addressed this previously, but just answer it again in case. Is there a point delaying Bestial Wrath by two or three seconds to cast it and kill command together? Um, oh, the, you need the to thing, cast two kill yeah. commands. You need every to time. cast two kill commands. So, uh, you basically, when your kill command is halfway gone through the cooldown, then it's safe to use your uh, Beastial Wrath, your first one, because then it needs what three seconds to come back or to be ready, and then it's six second cooldown. So your first one you're gonna cast it three seconds in your Beastial Wrath, and the second one you're gonna cast it nine seconds in the Beastial Wrath. So that's safe. So don't yeah. cast Beastial Wrath right after using your kill command, basically. Mm -hmm. Reverse it, is what you're right. saying, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Let's but, say, like, yeah. you, you should, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know, like, you could wait a couple of seconds not pressing the kill command if you, if you want to do that, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I think uh, what Roger said is correct, that just make sure that you're going to hit two kill commands on that uh, Beastial Wrath. Yeah. That is uh, the most important thing. Like, even if you delay Bestial Wrath for a couple of seconds, it's not the end of the world. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. You used to be able to do three kill commands with readiness, which was pretty cool, yeah, but now... that was nice. I agree. Mm -hmm. no, you Rest in peace, it. readiness. Rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys discuss that in the main show, how you felt about the removal of readiness? I know we mentioned that it was removed, um, but the reasoning yeah. was, was that it, it complicated the cooldown, like the the whole on the pull, what buttons you're pushing, it yeah. complicated all of that way too much. Um, what did you think about that as, as really high-end raiders? Which one do you duplicate and stuff, yeah. Right. Um, you miss when, that, do you miss that you, gameplay, or did you agree with the decision to remove it? When it, when you pull the boss, like, with PM, like, PM has been really, um, basically the superior spec for a long time in the um, midst of Pandaria, except for this tier. Um, I think uh, it's gonna like it's just comes from your spine, the rotation, what you're doing. It's just you just uh, know what you're doing. But I I just think that w w it was specifically for PV PVP 
the nerf that you can make. You can be immune two times in a row uh, with Bestial Wrath and you can break so much CC, you can do so much burst, all that stuff. I don't really, like, the opener itself, it wasn't too hard for uh, BM Hunter. When you pull some bosses like 600 times, you, you know, uh, trust me, you're gonna, you're gonna know what, to, what buttons to press. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree on that, that after having done, like, you sit there at the dummy and you come up with an opener and then you just do it five, ten times and after that it just goes by itself, like, you don't even think about it, the, the hand just moves, it has its own will. Um, but I think that readiness in general didn't make much sense. I agree, uh, you asked uh, this specifically, I do agree that it was a right move to remove to remove the the ability from the game because a as i said in pvp it was i think making really hard to balance the game because of it and then b i think it didn't really make much sense in um in pve as well because you're supposed to use it reactively kind of like preparations for rogues um like Rogues can use preparation to get some extra cooldowns up. So if you could use it to get an extra deterrence and you did it for that reason, then I understand it. But what ended up happening was you were using it right on the pool just to get an extra rapid fire. Right. That's it. Um, yeah, so it didn't exactly. make much sense. <laughs> and yeah, it overcomplicated the opener, which might have made a lot of hunters who are not so used to it and were not pulling 600 times a boss. Yeah. Um, and they were like, okay, what do I press first? Oh, readiness. Okay, everything from the start again. What's going on? So I guess it was kind of confusing for them. I'm glad that they removed it. I just wish they added something else in return, some cooldown, something cool, which they didn't. They just buffed a bit the damages, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. Because, you know, chat, when I asked that question, a bunch of people in chat were like, well, it wasn't all that hard with readiness. And the question isn't really about whether it's difficult or not, because honestly... WoW in general is, is not that difficult of a game and people can press buttons in the right order just if you do enough research and pull the boss enough. But So the question isn't, is it, this, is it that difficult? It's just, does it make the gameplay more fun? Is it interesting? Yeah. And, that, and it sounds to me like that readiness, if it had acted like the rogue preparation, then it would, have been in, it would have been more interesting. But if it's just giving you more buttons to push on the pull every single time, then maybe it's not all that much more fun and interesting. So. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, wow, it's hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, wow, I, I, I don't want to be I, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person who's like, "Oh man, hardcore reading is easy." Cuz hardcore reading isn't that easy, but in ter in terms of just pressing buttons in the right order, that's just a matter of memorization. I don't know if yeah. that's I don't know if that's all that Do much. Do you fun. know what this buddy had to endure? How much monster drinks were consumed during progression? <laughs> don't tell me it's not hard to play World of Warcraft. Nah. I don't think I, I think World of Warcraft is difficult. Yeah, I'm just saying there are there are aspects yeah. of the game. If you're saying like, oh man, readiness made playing a hunter more difficult. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that's really where you want the difficulty to be in World of Warcraft, because WoW is hard, but I don't think that that cooldown is I don't think that a cooldown like that is is really the way to add more fun and complication to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like doing your rotation is not hard. I, I get that. It's uh, the hard part of World of Warcraft is purely coming up with a good strategy and executing it, and that's, that's about mechanical it. Mechanical stuff. Your skill yeah. as a player and, and your knowledge and your future sight pretty much basically. You know what's mm -hmm. coming up next and how do I how do I react to that? When that happens, what happens when that when I react to that? What happens when this happens and stuff like that? Yeah, it's all about. It's very mechanical. And yes, I'm bad at sarcasm. As as <laughs> as people on AJB know, yeah. I hate jokes. and hates mm. jokes. I'm not mm -hmm. good at jokes. I'm sorry. And I, I'm not <laughs> no, it's funny. I so. just totally missed it. Like, woo, woo, right over my head. Um, Anything else pressing, Anna, from chat or anything? Well, um, I I know that there was a bunch of stuff in the main show that we said that we would get to in the after show, and I'm yeah. trying to make and I'm trying to make sure that we actually addressed it all. Um, yep. I don't know, Bay. I, I'm, I'm looking through my list because I've been trying to copy them out of chat. Do you remember anything that we missed during the main show? Hunter Utility with their personal cooldowns was one of the topics with deterrence and camouflage and... Oh, there's one more. What's the other one? I forgot it. Master's Call. There you go. Mm -hmm. Master's Call. So... How much are they useful right now? How much do you actually guys use this? I know that 
that okay. if I want kind of watch to actually be useful. So yes, I want like seriously, it would be so fun if you could like camouflage, get like small damage buff for a couple of seconds. Like let's say you're spamming those uh, explosive swords, black arrows, whatnot. You can just uh, snap the camouflage right in there, get the small small damage buff for even a couple of seconds to take the snap shot, and uh, then have a little bit stronger dots. Like just. Just a little bit, but at the moment I don't really use camouflage for anything. If if I solo like uh, all the instances, just skip out trash stuff like yeah. that. Disengage is amazing. I this love that skill. Amazing. That is yeah. amazing skill. Mm -hmm. And um, master skull nowadays, and there is only one fight where I use it, and it's uh, spoils to remove the slowing thingies. Um, yeah. And then, um, well. Veterans, I don't know, like Roger. What do you think about that? You you can't do DPS while you're using uh, defensives, like all the other classes except for Shadow Priest. I love it, man. I love yeah. just sitting there and <laughs> doing nothing. And doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal of every DPS. Oh you have that God. fight where you sit there and do nothing, and then oh we all gosh. complain that it's too easy. Dude, you I, nailed I like, it, man. You nailed it. <laughs> I like I like how we are the only class who has to have a cancel aura macro for our cooldowns because we just want it for half a sec and then get rid yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh, hey, I have plenty of cancel sense. aura macros. Well, I guess they're I mean, defense. I don't understand. I don't understand. They start deterrence giving you parry and dodge. Then they make it that you can deflect stuff. Yeah. Then they make it that it increases your um, your damage reduction. Well, why don't you just make it a bubble already and stop bothering us with all these changes, small, small chains all the time. Just make it a bubble, that's it. You can shoot during deterrence, but you do less DPS. Just do that. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something. It seems like one of the only awkward, most awkward raid, like, personal, like, you know, damage Well, the Shadow Priests cooldowns. in chat are very unhappy that you haven't recognized that Dispersion works pretty much the same way. Well, Dispersion... Yeah. It, I, did it, say, I did say... Shadow priests also. Yeah. I okay. Did say to put the, put a power struggle on this though, shadow priests dispersion is far and beyond much better than deterrence. However, just to well, put I that still in. win because bubble is the best considering I can DPS through it. Well, but, but we it all removes... know that bubble is superior to every other personal CD ever. So. All five of you, Roger. Well, <laughs> but like you can you can totally avoid certain huge mechanics with deter with with uh, with um. Um, yeah, deterrent versus deterrent. deterrence kind of like that's not always work. Well, yeah, and, and the things that are things that bubble don't, don't work on a lot of times, something like dispersion will correct. work on because it's a 90% damage reduction instead yeah. of an immunity. And some, yeah. some mechanics are built such that they ignore immunities. On yep. the other hand, I have the ability to remove debuffs, and something like dispersion does not. So you've got your pluses and your minuses. Yeah, deterrence doesn't remove debuffs either, just right. saying. <laughs> but it's funny right, because it's more like dispersion. deterrence works with the weirdest things. Like, have you been on Garros where the your team fails to kill the the engineer and the, you have the big ass Iron Star coming at you in phase one and you just <laughs> press deterrence yeah. and just go through it, no problem. Like, how does that make any sense? There's a massive thing crossing your head. How <laughs> does deterrence, like some little swords around you, protect you from that? <laughs> Makes no sense. Now we're it's now we're talking about deflection. Man. Deflection. deflection. <laughs> You're just that good, Roger. All right, your class is just that good. Your little axes can deflect giant, molten, fiery, infused, uh, dark iron stars. That's True story. Works. My raid told me that on Claxi Paragons that um the rap that rapid fire was was one of those things that Bubble didn't save you from. It was like it ignored immunities or something like that. So I was like, "Gosh darn it!" You know, my bubble's on a minute and a half cooldown. I can't cheese one of these. That sucks. So you yeah. know, I run out from the boss and I dodge it and I run back in. And then I learned, like, I learned like three days ago that actually you can cheese it with bubble. And then I felt really stupid. <laughs> so, oh, you got they trolled they, you? My wow. raid trolled me. So. Well, I think maybe they were talking about the aim that you can't yeah. actually you can't, bubble. You can't yeah, bubble maybe, aim, yeah, maybe I miss maybe I misheard it and it's aim yeah. that you can't that you can't bubble out of and you can no. you can use disturb, dispersion on that. But I, I know yep. that somebody told me specifically and they did so knowing that it was wrong, that you couldn't bubble through rapid fire, so I had to figure out how to do it right instead of cheesing it. Yep. Yeah. 
Hit Stuff reductions versus immunity is the different mm -hmm. so. I like ignoring mechanics. It makes me very sad when I don't get to ignore them. Well, we had on the, the tank episode last week, Brewmasters just stand in everything, apparently, because nothing hurts them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They just, I don't care what it is, just stand in it, whatever, stagger. It's no big deal. I'm a Brewmaster. All right, well, I have a question for our hunters before we let them go. Um, since yep. we since we very carefully didn't address this on the regular show, and I know our viewers want to hear the answer to this question. Um, yes, Bay, I know we're not going to talk too in-depth about it, but y'all mm. did see the, the level 100 talents. Yep. And the level 100 talents aren't, maybe they're not, you know, set in stone, but I'm sure that they are in some ways addressing frustrations with your class. You talked a little bit about the make the pet disappear one. Uh, what, is your, <laughs> what is your first reaction to those level 100 talents? You like where they're going with them? You hate where they're going with some of them? What, what yeah, is I got smashed it right after that when I saw the, uh, <laughs> saw the pet talent. Okay, party on. This is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything I hoped is fully fight right here. Wow. It's party up. Yes. Nah, yeah, I agree. I think the talents are really, really cool. Um, not only the one with a, with a pet removal, but also the other two look pretty cool. I actually wish that I could use all three of them. Uh, well, the one that the, the Bola shot, I guess, is situational. Like, if there's a fight where you're AoE, that's cool. Yeah. But um, I like the other two. I, I don't want to have a pet. I want to play marksmanship, and I want to just do full damage. And as I, I also didn't mention it, I think, the good thing with ha not having a pet is that um, there are certain bosses where you need to decide who's going to get some uh, percent damage buffs. Or even if you don't need to decide, some people get damage buffs, but they don't necessarily transfer to your pet as well. So you're basically get making 80% out of that buff potential. Whereas with this talent, you're getting full amount of damage yourself. So that buff is going to be fully effective on you and you're going to be a candidate. Because guess what? As I said, when there are these weird jobs that you need some some guys to do them, we are the first guys to be on that list. But when there's something good, God forbid if we ever are on those lists, it's like yeah. all warlocks and mages and rogues and the So cry me a river, man. That's cry me a river. Cry me a river. Well, yeah. But yeah, like I agree totally. Like think about that you could play survival right now uh, with thirty percent. Um, Damage buff, what you get from with or without you, the talent, uh, the, the talent what's um, remo removing your pet. Yeah. Think about the AOE and all that stuff. You could actually get tricks, tricks of trade. You could take screenshots yeah. while somebody lands tricks on tricks of trades on you. Yeah. But now you can't get tricks of trades because uh, your pet doesn't get anything about it. So, like rogues are like, yeah, I want to give it to the guys who is actually gonna make some use out of that. I'm like. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm it, pet. Oh. That's funny. Well, before we get screenshots from the show, I wanted to go back to uh, if you had any more information or some updates for the mythic stance on Paragon for for you guys, Deva. If you had anything for for the guys that follow you and looking forward to seeing you guys back in the in the race. I know Roger's rubbing his hands right now. So, <laughs> and actually, it was, when good, I bumped I mean, in... it's good news for everybody. Yeah, when I bumped into Scott at BlizzCon, uh, Sko, as you know, he has two Ts that take off his name, but uh, he uh, he was excited to raid against yeah, people I... again. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm so happy to actually raid uh, against um, the 25 man guilds. It is stuff like endless debate on 10... Or 25 man and I like I really discourage people uh, on my stream that I don't want to talk about it it's, it's as pointless like it's so great that everybody can race against uh, each other I just hope that the Chinese um, oh, Asian World of Warcraft ain't gonna be like some bullshit what, what it was on uh, on this year so they could actually like do some double resets and whatnots you know so yeah. um, but well, I'm, that's... I'm actually super pumped about the mythic, mythic change. Okay. And if, if you guys want to know, uh, um, we are having about about uh, 20, 20 players on the pre, uh, premier. How do you pronounce that word? Uh, preliminary uh, roster. Preliminary. preliminary, preliminary. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Preliminary oh, roster. Uh, mm. So I'm I'm. 
uh, the roster is looking good, man. Only thing I guess I, I can't name any players, of but yeah. That's good news Great. for everybody. Yeah. I know a lot of us are really excited. I think in general the top end raid community is like acknowledging that it's going to be a painful transition and, and more painful for some guilds than others, sure. but fairly optimistic about the direction of where raiding yep. is going. I haven't really met any top end raiders yet. A, a lot of people are nervous about some of the changes and you know complaining about some of the ones that will affect us negatively but i haven't met anyone who is overall negative about this direction yeah. i think all of us will are are hoping for a more positive and, and more awesome and competitive rating community as a whole when it's all settled down we so, joked about it here. that if the i know there's a tweet the other day about how the uh, if the asian version of world of warcraft is on the same schedule and the same raid sort of model as the mythic raid that we get in here EU US kind of stuff and it's the goal for them currently, but they have to see if it literally works out for them. Why they get double resets and stuff is because a lot of people over there play in like land cafes and stuff. They want to have the option for their players to actually play the game on their schedule. So it's just different. It's a whole totally different lifestyle over there for them. But if it gets on the exact same realm as you guys, that'll be interesting because mm -hmm. the top Asian guilds are really good. And have them in mythic they on just the same. play in it. They play in a different manner exactly. too. I mean, they, exactly. it, there's it, it, there's such a different way that they approach the game and approach yeah. rating. It's gonna be it's gonna be nuts to see all of us in the same sort of bucket. It will so. be. Be I'm fun, excited. Yeah. I'm excited to be honest, so that this time we're not gonna have 50 million world firsts. Like, it's kind of it's kind of boring to West. just win everything. You know. 25 man Asia world first and all of those things you know Jesus Christ now it's just gonna be that and also I'm really excited to see all all of those comments saying oh method you're just world first because Paragon went 10 man if oh, they were yeah. five man you would be crushed so <laughs> let's let's see I mean, I'm excited yeah, good luck, to be, good luck to everybody I'm, I'm really yeah. excited to be honest because when uh, it was really fun when we were com competing against each other. Well, to be fair, it wasn't really a competition. We were just getting crushed by them yeah. back in the day. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. It will be interesting. Yeah, it's good news for everybody. I think we're all going to be watching the World First race very closely when Warlords comes out. Yep. I know we'll have to have all of you guys on the show to talk about how it's gone. So make sure you make some room for Final Boss when y'all are all done with progression next year. Like six yeah. months down the line. Yeah, we're, it's interesting to see when that's going to happen. And that's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of fun. I mean, you, you posted it in chat. The bigger raid community is the better one. And it's all on the same ladder for balancing reasons and all that stuff. It's going to be amazing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go around and get screenshots real quick here. It's been an awesome show tonight. Deva, you want to give me something for the uh, thumbnail on YouTube there? Like a screen capture for me. Thumbs up. Smile. Actually looking at the camera, giving your... What do you call everybody? <laughs> The sons, your sons, everybody. Not how you're. Yeah, yeah. internet folks. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I could like <laughs> more likely people who who follow my channel. I um. Uh, on summertime, I I never have shirt when I stream, but since this oh. is your show, so I'm God. like oh, God. I'm not gonna do that. But <laughs> I'm just see you have to see people are play, uh, playing yeah. my subscribe sure icons not. on the sure on the not. chat. Shirt off. <laughs> Uh -huh. Strong back and all, all that stuff. So, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna you do that. You can give that. us a flex with a shirt on at least. How about that? Oh, <laughs> that's perfect. I got that. Oh not man, a big deal. that sounds good. Deva over on Deva High on Twitch.tv. Thank you again very much for being here, sir. Paragon, peace shout out. It's gonna be fun to see you guys in the mythic scene. And good luck to you in all of that. Thank you again for being here. Mm -hmm. The no shirt is so funny. It's awesome. <laughs> His pixels are flexing so yes. it's blurry. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm watching my own camera on Skype. It's crystal clear. It's and when I'm watching the stream, it's like somebody puked on my he's camera. Sending, he's sending so his wait. signal across the ocean, and I'm bouncing it back link to you me, guys. So Link me your stream again? You're going to link. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Oh. I got to fuck this one. I'm going to go over to Roger on this one. Roger, you got to show off the beard because it wasn't in the first screen shot. Can I can't I get Skull here so he can do a flex as well? Cause oh my god, I, you I, could. 
I'm not really a match for it. He's pulling in his second. He needs a replacement. No. Show that beard off. Show that beard off. Show the beard. Yeah, you got the beard off. How do you do that? I don't know. That's just going to look weird. Like like that or what? I'm totally using that as a screenshot for you. That looks wrong, man. I'm doing it. No, but you. that's fine. Unfortunately, there's no way to take it back now that you've done it on camera. Nope, it's done. It's gone. I got it. Uh, Anna, were you preparing? Are you ready? Where's your? Okay, what are you gonna do? Give me a screenshot. Screen I mean, me. I would take, I would put the cat in the screenshot, but I think he'd be kind of mad. No, that's fine. He was in the camera earlier. It was kind of creepy. Like he was sniffing it, so he was right up in his face. <laughs> was he really? He was. Here, let's see the if show. I, let's see if I can get him. So you can get him. All right, that's fine. I'll do my screenshot then when you grab the kitty cat. I don't. I, everyone's like flexing and stuff. I can't do anything like that. I, I'm not anywhere near that level, so I'm just gonna give a yeah, shot I, I should have uploaded one picture before this show, so you could have used that, but... Oh, yeah. yeah? No, I don't know. It's always kind of last minute what I want to put on the thumbnail. I just want to grab something for the actual... Take oh. the picture quick. Here, get the picture. See? There he is. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> He's so him. happy that I've got... that I'm, like, paying him attention while we're on the show. Got him. Yeah, got him. That works. That's fine. Anna Feel, Twitter, at Anna Feel. You can follow her over there. I missed the, the Rogers, Method Roger on the Twitter. Deva is on yep. Deva High on Twitch, and I'm back over here at Bay TLM on Twitch. You guys were awesome. Chat room is crazy tonight. You guys are a lot of fun. Have a great week. Have fun at work tomorrow. Again, Holy Paladins next week. Check our Twitter and Facebook for who's actually coming on the show next week for Holy Paladins, and we will see you... See you then. Have a great night. Everyone in the Final Boss crew behind the scenes, we thank you very much Peace. for watching. Yeah, what thanks is... for coming, you guys. It was a really great active show this week. Make yeah. sure that you come back for next week, because we'd yep. love to see you guys every week. It'll be yeah. really exciting. It's one I will right. not have this, though, next week. That's no. for sure. One, <laughs> one PST, four, e, four uh, EST, and ten CET is the show times. We will see mm -hmm. you all next week. Have a good night. Yeah. Peace out, guys. Bye.